It is now day 11 of Mauna Loa's eruption in Hawaii, and something quite interesting occurred at the advancing lava flow. Although the northernmost lobe of lava continued to inch towards a major road on the island, it dramatically slowed. Whereas on December 6th it was 1.93 miles away from the road, on December 7th it was 1.8 miles or 2.9 kilometers from the road. This sudden slowdown occurred because the main lava channel several miles uphill experienced a blockage, causing a new lava breakout to occur. As a result, a portion of molten rock which was previously heading towards the road in the aforementioned lava loop is now being transported to a secondary mass of material which has flowed a length of approximately four-fifths of a mile. This outbreak is best visible in the shown photos, where the older and newer lava channels can be observed. This new channel could simply represent a temporary breakout, or could even theoretically turn into the dominant flow of lava. If the latter were to occur, the location of the lava flow suggests that if it were to travel several more miles, it would turn to the east instead of to the west. While the main lava flow is moving quite slowly, this is not the case for freshly erupted material that is funneled into the lava channel. U.S. Geological Survey scientists observed lava moving at high speeds, which they estimated to be moving at between 20 and 27 miles per hour, as shown in these two videos. In the weeks and months leading to Mauna Loa's eruption, its summit was slowly uplifted on the order of approximately an inch due to a shallow intrusion of magma. While this uplift would continue into the early hours of the eruption, this uplift would subsequently turn to subsidence. Since the eruption began when Mauna Loa was at a peak amount of uplift, a section of its summit caldera has sunk by 15.4 inches or 39 centimeters. To explain why this subsidence is occurring, I present this diagram of a typical shield volcano. They generally have shallow magma chambers which expand during periods of unrest. However, if a flank eruption occurs, lava from this magma chamber moves towards the side of a volcano, typically erupting in the known rift zone. As large volumes of magma spill out of the volcano and move downslope, it causes a section of the shallow magma chamber to be drained. This eventually causes the rock overlying the magma chamber to collapse downwards and fill the empty space. In extreme, unusually large eruptions, this process can lead to the formation, deepening, or expansion of calderas at a shield volcano. Thus, calderas at shield volcanoes generally form from lava draining to the side of a volcano, rather than material being violently ejected in large volume explosive eruptions at stratovolcanoes, which also can create calderas. As a final note, here are a series of images from NASA Worldview which display the heat signatures from both Mauna Loa's eruption in the center left of the images and Kilauea's less voluminous eruption to the southeast of it. The heat signatures, which are colored orange and red, clearly display now cooling and inactive lava flows within Mauna Loa's caldera, which also spilled over to the west before stopping during the early days of the eruption. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank this channel's top supporters on YouTube via YouTube members and patrons on Patreon.